All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Sound Test Room US. Uh, so we're gonna have a look at B Step Sequencer 2.0 here. Doug just did a really awesome video uh, covering, you know, its basic functionality and getting you started on making something musical with the app here. Um, we are going to just focus on the MIDI today. I uh, just hit the little trash can there to, to clear this and, and make sure all of our settings are reset. So over here on the right hand side, we have our little hub looking alien fingers. And that's what we want to, to use our MIDI settings. So we have MIDI out, we have MIDI in, MIDI out for multiple sequences, a MIDI learn and launch pad settings. So a lot of features here. I do not have a launch pad, unfortunately. Um, so we can't really cover that today, but if you do, it's very cool that this is kind of built right in there for you. But let's focus on MIDI out right now. So we're gonna use Magellan first here. And um, we'll turn on our background audio right away. And yeah, and so we got the old fat sow going on. So let's select Magellan from our MIDI out there. And, uh, and yeah, we can pick our channel here with the, the knobs. You can also press and um, write it in manually if you like. But yeah, so let's, uh, let's get a little sequence going here. So very cool. So we got our, you know, our global settings here. So very cool. So very easy to get, get you started right away. We have all these different tabs to play with, um, you know, per step octave, chord features, all sorts of stuff. So like I said, see Doug's video over on his channel, The Sound Test Room, to, uh, to check that out. But um, in any case, you know, so in the five stars here on the, on the very bottom, this is where we can, you know, select how many tabs we want. Three stars gives us a little less options. Make sure you have all five going on and check out the CC tab. And this is really cool stuff. So uh, we have two lanes where we can send automations to um, depending on what we want to, to control. So let's change the second one here to three. That's fine. And let's pop back over to uh, uh, Magellan here. And in our preferences, go to your CC learn. I'm gonna clear this all just to make sure we don't have anything left over from a previous run through of this. And let's do volume for CC7, our first lane. And let's do, um, let's do the attack here for uh, the second one. And we did three, I believe, over on B-Step. So there we go. So we can see, check out the volume right there. It's at uh, just past the red there, the, the standard default there. And now on a per step basis, make sure you highlight the ones that you want to adjust we can send different values to, to the volume there. So let's blast it there. And um, yeah, we'll just keep it, keep it low there. So you can even watch it there. So very cool stuff. Let's do the same for our attack. So very cool stuff there. So you can automate some controls, set it to whatever you like, you know, send it to your, your detune, your filter, whatever you want. And you have uh, two lanes to work with there. So very cool stuff. Um, our program changes, unfortunately, this would, like say we select this, uh, you know, we're on the fat sow. If we move it to, to seven, it's going to send it to another preset. So while that does sound very cool to be able to do that on a per step basis, um, Magellan does not like it. It was getting you know, some stuck notes or whatever. I'm not quite sure what was happening. I couldn't even play the keyboard once I started uh, to mess with that. I tried the same thing in Sunriser to see if it was a Magellan problem and it was happening there too. So I'm not sure if you know, that's the intended usage for the program changes or what, but um, it was a little bit too much for, for the, the programs I was trying it on. 
So we're not going to be able to, to touch on that, I guess, um, anymore. But nice to know that the uh, the features are there, and you know maybe with some uh, some future updates, maybe that'll be fixed in the uh, in the various apps. But in any case, let's check out the MIDI in here. Let's do um, let's get Funkbox going on here, and let's check our settings right away. Okay, so already it's uh, it definitely was sending. So we want to use our internal clock, check our MIDI routing, make sure that B-step is going to be receiving the clock Clock out there. Looks cool. Uh, let's pick uh, Funk 5. And then um, in MIDI in here, you know, obviously the virtual port was working for us, but we can also just do Funk Box there. And now when we hit play... So very cool. So we can send clock. Um, it doesn't uh, manually change the BPM there, but it's definitely reading the BPM. Um, yeah, so very cool stuff. So if we want to be able to, you know, get a full on jam going on, we can do that with uh, some drums here, some uh, some B step, send it out to whatever we like. So very cool stuff with the MIDI in there. Um, MIDI out for multiple sequences. This is very cool too. So let's check this out. So let's see if we can get this with Animog. I Animog has been having a bit of trouble sometimes finding B-Step in our setup here. Yeah. And same thing with uh, with this. Let's see if it's listed. There it is. Okay. So, yeah, I've been having just some slight bugs, I guess, where it's just like, uh, you know, I was using MIDI Bridge earlier, and MIDI Bridge just wasn't even showing B-Step, but it was there. You know, it was in the background. It was able to receive, you know... Uh, I could set it to MIDI bridge here, but like you know, like I said, MIDI bridge wasn't seeing it. Same thing with Animog right now; it's not seeing it, but it's there. We're gonna have to trust it. So we're on channel three inside of Animog. We are on uh, uh, channel three for our our second output here, and now this is really cool. So let's check this out. So in our B tab, we can let's copy this over, and let's actually just. Uh, Let's change the octaves here real quick, just so we can hear it. Cool. And now when we go to our B tab here, in our second sequence, let's send this to, to two. And so these should be both playing at the same time now. So very cool stuff. So you know when I moved it over to three, there it looks like it might have been reading. Um, okay, yeah, it uses the the master output again. So it was still sending to to Magellan um, just twice, I guess. You know. So, but in any case, we could set this to to multiples here. So we could use um, yeah the master output channel two, and that should be able to send us to uh, to Magellan as well. And that's on our third lane. So let's copy this over one more time. And now we should have three going on. So really cool stuff. So you can you can have multiple sequences going on all at the same time. Um, What's really cool too is like, let's kind of copy a few of these over. And now what we can do is when we send them to um, the various sequences, they'll flip back and forth between each other and kind of create little chains on their own. So, you know, this is uh, one and one here. These are gonna just flip back and forth between each other. Two and two are gonna do the same.
So very cool stuff. So it kind of like stays in groups like that for you. So you can create an entire chain just for Animog, an entire chain just for Magellan. Um, you know, really cool stuff here with this. So yeah, uh, let's go back to our, our alien fingers here. Okay, and yeah, let's let's touch on the MIDI learn. So we're gonna be using an oxygen keyboard here, and um, let's try and get it get it in frame a little bit here. So it's a little dark, I know, but um, we're just gonna be using the knobs here, and in our receive port, we'll do the oxygen, and uh, we'll send it to the out too. And now what we can do is when we tap on uh, the hat here, this is our MIDI learn info. So now just tap on a, um, a button, whichever button you want to control. And then now I'm just moving the knobs on my controller. And it's, uh, it should be reading it for me. So we could even set it to our global stuff there in our tune. And now when we... Uh, <laughs> So very cool stuff here. So it's really easy to do the, the MIDI learn. Um, yeah, you know, if you got, like if you have a launch pad, there's a, there's a good little video uh, from the developer on setting up multiple sequences to, to various pads there. So really cool stuff here. So yeah, so, you know, like I said, there's a, there's a hell of a lot going on underneath the hood here. Um, you could spend all day just talking about this app, you know, between all of these tabs here, you have so much functionality. Um, like I said, things have been a little slightly buggy for me, um, particularly when using the MIDI, just like the, the program changes there, and uh, just not being found inside of other apps, just not listing itself. But, uh, but you know, with a little perseverance, I've been able to figure it out. Uh, if you have any questions, I can do my best to answer them. Um, but yeah, so check us out at thesoundtestroom.com. Uh, you know, check us out on Patreon, as always. Really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll see you again real soon. All right, take care, everybody.